Well, welcome back to part four of my uh, little build video here. And since uh, I finished part three, I went ahead and did a couple of things that uh, were pretty self-explanatory and I didn't feel like I needed to include them in the, uh, in the video. The first thing I did was uh, I installed the, uh, the buzzer and it fit, it fit very nicely right in, right in here, if you can see. Uh, let me turn it up this way, uh, behind the camera. And as you can see, right, uh, right there on the buzzer is a little button right there. And that little button right there, uh, you have to be able to get to that because every time you disconnect the battery, since this thing's got its own battery in it, it's going to start screaming at you. So uh, one of the considerations for where to mount this thing was, can I get to that button? And the beautiful thing is the camera sits up here. So all I have to do is just stick my finger in here and I can push the button very easily. Uh, and uh, just like that, I can feel it right in there. And I can also do it through the side here if I have to. So it won't be a problem uh, turning off that ridiculously loud alarm, but uh, that thing might just mean the difference between finding this out in the woods or not. So I thought it'd be a good idea to have it. The second thing that I did was I put on the, um, the power connector here and the capacitor. Now last time I talked about mounting the capacitor sideways and, uh, and that, that turned out working pretty good. Uh, and then this is going to be the main power lead right here. So as you can see, it's all soldered on there. And let me, let me zoom in a little bit. You can see how, how that's soldered on there and the capacitor. As you can see, I took some insulation, some red and black, just some silicone wire insulation, and, and put it over there right up to the point where the capacitor soldered, uh, soldered onto the board. And um, that'll keep the, uh, that'll keep anything from, from shorting out. So that's on there nice and solid, not going anywhere. And uh, that takes care of what I've done uh, since the last video. Now, today we're going to start wiring stuff up to the uh, to the flight controller. And the first thing that I, I'm going to wire is the uh, video transmitter back here. And what I've done is I've run the wire from the video transmitter uh, underneath and it goes right to that connections right to that corner. Now, the uh, blue wire coming out of the video transmitter plug is the input for smart audio which can which allows you to control the channel and the power um, from your uh, from your transmitter uh, the yellow wire is video the black wire is ground and the red wire is battery voltage because this particular video transmitter works on anything up to 40 something volts and and the video transmitter uh, especially if you've got it set to 800 watts is going to draw a lot of power so you want to you want to hook it to, to what they call a vbat or v plus and on the board here let me move it in here so we can see this and this this actually helps me out because i can look at the screen and actually see these things Smart audio on this uh, controller is set up on UART 1. And I know that because I plugged the USB plug in and started up uh, Betaflight to see what, what configuration this board already had on it. And good news was the lights blinked and it worked. And I found out that it uses uh, UART 1 for smart audio and UART six for the receiver so I already know where to hook those where to hook those things up I'll have to look uh, where the telemetry lines and the GPS and the other things how I'm going to set them up but to start out with I know that that smart audio uh, goes to uh, to uh, UART1 so that means that the TX the TX 
pin of UART1 or T1 which is right here right there T1 actually it's going to be this one because the the uh, legend is below the hole so right in this little corner I have the blue wire from the video transmitter video out which goes to the yellow wire I have B plus which is the red wire and then over here in this corner I have ground so these four group nicely all power the VTX so we're gonna go ahead right now and we're gonna solder them up okay the first thing that we need to do is to uh, put some solder on the pads and we're going to be using this one here and these three so let's solder let's put let's solder those put a little wow these are tiny We want, I guess, about this, about this much right here. It never hurts to have them a little long. Okay. And then we're going to go and tin it. These are 30 gauge wires very very thin silicone silicone wire well this is some tiny stuff and now we're gonna now we're gonna tin it a little heat up the pad push the wire in. There we go. Okay, so I put an antenna on it now and uh, it's a uh, that way I can power up the VTX but I'm not going to apply power to this quite yet because the first thing that you're supposed to do is you're supposed to check for shorts so let's get a multimeter out here and set it on continuity which should beep now this has got a capacitor here so you may get a little chirp as the capacitor charges but then it should stop there you go so there's no direct shorts now that's the first safeguard to keep from smoking a hundred some bucks worth of electronics here in case there's a short the second thing is something that I picked up watching Joshua Bardwell's channel and a number of other guys and they call them smoke stoppers and uh, so I built one and a smoke stopper here is basically something that just goes between the battery and the drone and it's got a light bulb so the positive lead goes from the drone through the light bulb and then the negative lead connects directly to the drone and the reason the purpose for that is that if there is a short and it starts drawing a lot of current the light bulb will light and that that'll use the the excess current to light the light bulb instead of the excess current setting your your electronics on fire so this is what i'm going to do i'm going to plug this into here and just check my wiring just to be sure the red wire comes out of the drone goes into the smoke stopper to the bulb comes out of the bulb goes into the red wire that goes to the battery black wire oh yeah that's black but that's that's not it the black wire just loops around and goes back to black okay 
So I'm going to very nervously plug this in and hopefully we'll get some beeps and not some smoke or not a big bright light bulb. Hey. Okay. Good deal. Good deal. And we have LEDs on the video transmitter. And that's great. So I'm going to unplug that. And that makes me feel really, really good. Okay, so I have the, uh, the drone plugged into the computer. And now we're going to go open up Betaflight up here. And we're going to connect the drone. And it connected. Now, if I wobble the drone around, the little drone should move. That's good. And this is the front. Down, front, up, left yaw, right yaw, right, roll, pitch. So that's all working pretty good. So I guess, uh, I guess I'm happy about that. Now, uh, another thing that I have here that I'm going to set up, uh, and I'll show it to you real quick here, is basically a little monitor. And uh, that'll let me look at the output of the, uh, of the video transmitter. I want to see if the video transmitter is getting hot, too. Not, not bad at all. I want to make sure that that's actually transmitting. So we'll, I'll turn that on. Okay. In order to power the video transmitter, I'm going to need to put the battery back in. So let me plug the battery in here. And uh, now I should... I should have a video transmitter. Yep, there's something there. It's scanning the channels. So I should have a video transmitter. And of course, I got nothing but a black screen and I have no receiver. But uh, it tells me that it's in air mode. <laughs> so <laughs> that's good. That's good. So I do have, I do have, uh, uh, I do have video transmitter. And I'm getting I'm getting a good signal from it, so uh, I know that that's working. Now, the uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to go to uh, setup here. Uh, everything is is okay there, and then I want to go to ports. And uh, you see that uh, UART one, which was T one, has the uh, VTX. It's set up for SBS Smart Audio. Uh, I had mentioned that the serial receiver here is going to be on UART 6, but this thing's got seven UARTs. So one of those is going to be for telemetry. One of them is going to be for the GPS. But I still that's the nice thing about this F7 controller is you can, inverted or not, you can plug anything anywhere. And, uh, and that works. Let me check the video transmitter. That's not really getting hot. Cool. So the ports look pretty good. Configuration. Uh, D-Shot 600 is what it's supposed to be. Uh, I'm going to leave all this stuff the way it is for right now. I don't need to worry about this. the, uh, the uh, receiver. I haven't hooked that up yet. Uh, the rest of this one I can figure GPS. I don't need the D-Shot beacon, which is the beeper that makes the motors move because I've got going to have a buzzer in it and the rest of this stuff is fine. So let's just do that for right now. And then we're going to go to uh, power and battery. Let's see, it, it, went, went, it went rebooted, so i got to reconnect. Power and battery, we'll worry about that later. PID tuning, receiver, modes I won't worry about. But let's, let's check the motors. I want to see if the motors run and what direction they're in. So this should spin the motors up. And it is. Okay, so let's take a look and see which motor is, uh, it, whether they're going in the right direction. Boy, these are quiet motors too, beautiful. Now, this is the front of the drone. So this is gonna be motor one right here. Uh, motor one, and it's supposed to turn in this way. And sometimes it's hard to tell and, and the easy way to do that is to take a little piece of paper and just hold the edge up there and see which way it pulls it. 
So that's turning correctly. This one needs to be spinning this way. And that's backwards. So that's motor. It's motor three is backwards. I'll make a note of that. And motor two is reversed. And motor four is spinning in the correct direction. So there it is. It's all finished. And uh, took me two days to cram everything that I wanted to cram into this thing in here. Wire it all up. And I didn't want to bore you with all of the soldering and wiring because this is not really a how-to video, more uh, just my experience building a custom quad. But I do want to show you uh, what I ended up with. So let me zoom in. Okay. I decided that rather than mount a GoPro type camera on top, that I was just going to go with the Cadex Turtle V2 camera instead of the, the Rattel that I was going to put in there. And I ordered one. And uh, here it is installed in the, in the quad. Uh, but the Cadex Turtle V2 is also a, a 1080p 60 frame a second HD recorder. And it also came with a board. And that board really proved to be a mounting problem. Because, as you can see in the side here, there's no room on top of the stack here to put that particular board. I thought maybe that I could mount it up on top of the uh, VTX over here. But the problem with that was that this uh, really long wire that came with the turtle, with the V2, uh, that wire right there, was nowhere near long enough to go all the way to the back of the quad here. And uh, so it took a little finagling and I had to uh, adjust the, um, the mounts for the camera here to get the camera down a little bit lower. And I was able to mount the board for the turtle right underneath the metal part of the frame here. And it just fit in there with just a tiny little bit of, of space between it and the top of the camera. So it, it worked out. I, I, I ended up putting some heat shrink on it and uh, sets right up there. There's the connections that go back to the uh, to the flight controller and interestingly enough on this side there's a tiny little button underneath the uh, underneath there to start and stop recording and I can get to that and on this side is the SD card slot I don't know if you can see that there but there is an SD card right here little SD card there it is sticking out right there you can see it and that's very convenient to be able to to get to it from there so that's the camera installation and I tell you that took a little bit of engineering but it was worth it because it's uh, it's clean and neat and that uh, titanium frame ought to protect all that stuff from damage even in a hard crash. Now I also installed underneath here, you can see the front of it, a, uh, a beeper with a built-in battery that'll beep even after the, if, if you crash and the quad happens to, uh, to eject the battery or the battery happens to disconnect. So uh, that I managed to squeeze right in there and that was a trip getting that in there too but that fit just as well now uh, I did 
decide to use the Tyrannus R9M um, long range and the receiver just is tucked right in there and the antenna wire runs down the bottom of the quad and out the back and you can see right here you can see the uh, T-shaped antenna and that's neatly that was another mounting uh, nightmare, but I decided that that would be the best way to mount that, that antenna right in the back, sticking out kind of below the, uh, the VTX antenna. So the last thing I wanted on this was I wanted a GPS module because I wanted GPS rescue. Um, so since it has to, it has to uh, face the sky, I put the GPS module right up here on the top of the uh, of the top plate and wired it into the flight controller and and everything works everything works fine and I think that uh, weather permitting tomorrow morning I'm going to take it out and I'm going to uh, to test fly it now I haven't set the uh, the GPS module to rescue yet but I can test it because since the, the R9 receiver, long range receiver is full telemetry, uh, I'm able to see uh, any of the GPS uh, data that I, that I want to see uh, in my uh, on-screen display uh, when, I'm, when I'm looking in the goggles. And I've tested all that and it works. I've done a beta flight setup on this thing. And uh, right now I'm going to go out and I'll film it tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning, the uh, test flight and hopefully uh, an FPV flight with, uh, with his new quad. And we'll see how it works and see how well it records some uh, HD video. So stay tuned for that uh, later on in this week. Hopefully I'll have that video ready to go. And thanks for watching as usual. And I hope this uh, little build adventure of mine wasn't too boring. It, it, for me, it's been a tremendous learning experience. And I'm doing these things more for new guys like me getting into the hobby uh, as opposed to the seasoned FPV flyers who already know how to do everything that, that, that I've had to learn uh, to build this quad. And I hope I've done everything right after it flies and if it doesn't break and everything uh, works out like I hope it does, I will come back and uh, uh, do a video on the uh, PID tuning and the setups and the beta flight uh, setups of, of all the different uh, options that this quad has from the long range receiver to the CADEX Turtle HD uh, DVR built into it to the GPS and the setup of the GPS rescue. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, and as usual, now take the rest of the day off and go play with your drones. Thanks for watching.